मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी यह बोल गण श्याम महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बलवेड गण श्याम महाराज पैथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूजे पाद गुरु जी पूजे संतो ऑल यू डिवोरीज जय स्वामी नारायण wanted to start out with a small story today just so you can understand today's subject so one time there was this gentleman he had two parrots and the parrots were small at that time just babies so he decided to take care of them so uh, he took care of them for at least 5 6 years and then he had to move to a different village so he decided to sell the parrots So out of one parrot he sold it to a brahman obviously brahman brahman is very pure natured and very good hearted and the other parrot he couldn't find any other good person so he sold it to a person who wasn't so moral a person who was uh, you can say not religious so then after one year he comes back to his old village and he decides he wants to visit the parrots so first he goes to the brahman's home and right there when he enters the parrot inside the cage greets him and says welcome it is good to see you this is what the parrot said to to the person the person was very very delighted because he felt at heart that after raising these parrots this parrot i have sent him to a good home and now he has uh, you can say received good morals or at least he's been taught good words to say so afterwards after greeting that parrot he went to the evil person's home and uh the evil person was a butcher so he you know he was slaughterhouse and he slaughtered cows for a living and for meat and as a living so right there when he entered that person's home the parrot said i want to kill you i want to slaughter you i want to murder you these kinds of words came out of the parrot's mouth so the person felt very hurt at that time and he thought that you know he left right away but while he was going on his way back home he thought that in the beginning i raised both of these parrots for 5 years with the same food, same water, same environment, same everything. But then after giving them away, what happened? Why did they become like this? What was the reason? So while he was thinking, he met a saint along the way. And he asked the same exact question after explaining the whole story to the saint. And the saint said, the very definition or the very reason why both of those parrots became different and the end was because of kusang so that man understood that very reason i had a question for you would you ever go near radioactive waste meaning there are some areas in the world which are radioactive or you can say nuclear plants they are radioactive radioactivity is very hazardous to our body and it can cause mutations and cancer and what not would you ever go next to it even if you knew no because you know that it's going to kill you or it's going to do something that's not or going to give you some kind of side effects another question suppose there was a king cobra and you knew that it lived in this cage 5 feet away from you Would you go and open the cage? No. Why? Because you know that if you open the cage and the king cobra bites you, then you'll die because of its venom. Or let me give you another example. Suppose that someone made 
really, really, really good milk for you with sugar and different, different ingredients and made it really nice. But put just a small, tiny, minute drop of venom inside of it and told you that it's full of sugar and it's very nice, but it just has a small, tiny, minute, you can say, venom drop. Would you drink it? Obviously not, because you know in the same exact way. We associate with everyone that we define is good, but sometimes we meet these people who are bad-natured, who are corrupted, yet we don't know. It. And by just by associating with them, it's like drinking venomous milk, or it's like opening that cage of that king cobra, and the king cobra strikes that person, or it's like going into radioactive waste. So today's topic is kusang, something that we're familiar with on a daily basis, even in our schools, our colleges, yet we're not so aware of how much damage it can do to us if we associate with it. You know, in uh, some homes or even in some businesses, there's signs, be aware, security surveillance, recording, in progress, something like that, be aware. It's letting you know. So today's lecture is kind of like becoming aware of what you're really surrounded with in the outside world and actually recognizing and staying away from it. So first and foremost, you probably need a definition of gusang. Very simple, bad, evil, or corrupted association. Meaning, anyone that you associate with who is bad-natured, evil-natured, or corrupted in some way, that is a form of gusang. And there's three forms to be exact. But before I get into that, you've heard this word gusang. You've heard the word satsang. Now, what is satsang? Satsang is to develop good qualities in life. What is kusang? To d destroy good qualities that you possess. So it's pretty much opposites. North, south, you can say it's just complete opposites, east, west. There is nothing that comes good of associating with any of these people. So as I said, there's three components that make up kusang. External kusang, internal kusang, and kusang in satsang. First and foremost, external. External, what do I mean? The people who you meet around you. They seem like ordinary people. They wear the same clothes like you. They eat the same food like you. They also talk like you, yet they can also be kusangis. You just don't know it. Only when you look at their character, only when you see what they do, you can really understand that these people can ruin my life if I start to associate or hang out with them or if I even, you know, go with them or anywhere, even talk with them. They can destroy my life. So this is physically people outside. You see people going to parties. You see people drinking alcohol. You see people doing drugs. These, this is called external kusang. It's in the outside world. Number two, internal kusang. That's in the inside. What do I mean by that in the inside? Do I mean that you have bad people inside of you? No. What I mean is that for millions and millions of lives, we have been, you can say, haunted, corrupted, haunted, and very, very you know, entangled in vicious natures like ego, lust, anger, greed, jealousy, all these are considered to be internal kusung, and they take you away from God like no other. And number three, kusung inside of satsang. Now suppose you go to a mandir, or you at least you go to some kind of hall where you gather once a month or you know every two weeks to do some religious activities. Now there, you also need to be aware who you associate with. Because not everyone is 
the same. Let me give you an example. When rain falls, is it ever falling in one area and not falling in another? No, when rain falls, it falls equally in each area. Wherever it is falling, it's going to fall the same, correct? Now, when a pearl fish catches that raindrop from, you know, going from outside of the water, jumping out of the water, afterwards it becomes a pearl. When that water showers over a sugarcane farm, in the future it becomes sugar. That same water, when it actually, let's see, when it actually drops into the mouth of a cobra, it becomes venom. The same waterfall everywhere, yet three different effects. The first one, a pearl fish, it becomes a pearl. The second one, showers over a field, it becomes sugar. And the third one, the same water drop goes into the mouth of a cobra, it becomes venom. In the same way, when one is born on this earth, everything is the same. But regarding what type of atmosphere, environment, friendship one encounters, that is the result of how you become. That's why associating with the right person is very, very important in one's life. Now, what is Kusang like? Right now, in New York City, in the year of September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers were destroyed, correct? After that, a new tower was built just uh, a couple years after. And the, comp the construction just became complete. You can say last year. It's called the Freedom Tower. It reaches the height of 1,781 feet, which is the year uh, the United States got independence. Now, that building took approximately five to six years to build. After the damage, they had to clean up. Then they had to think of a plan, a blueprint, how to make the building. And then after they began the construction, 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 construction took five years and the building was complete, right? My question was, it took five years to build a new building, which reached the height of 1,781 feet. But afterwards, if someone put just some kind of small, you can say, you can say a device underneath the foundation of the building and then detonated that device, what would happen to the building? It would be destroyed in less than, you can say, 20 seconds. In the same exact way, it takes time to associate with good people and to become good like them. But just by associating with a person who is a kusangi, who is evil-natured, only by associating with him or her for one or two or three minutes, one's mind's waves start to change immediately. That's why it's very necessary to recognize who you associate with. Now, giving an example, how to be aware. In the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan even teaches us how deadly how venomous, how lethal the dose of kusang can be. In Gadrada, first chapter, 48th Vachramrut, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself states that after performing one's puja, one should daily pray to Maharaj that please save me from these kusangis. And then he lists four types of kusangis. I don't want to go deep into that, but even just imagine. Bhagwan himself is teaching us that be aware of kusang and do not try to be overconfident and associate and think that nothing would happen to you. In the time of Sri Maharaj, about 200 years ago, there was this devotee, you can say, by the name of Ebal Kachar. Ebal Kachar 
was Dada Kachar's father, and Abel Kachar had a brother by the name of Jiva Kachar. Now, Jiva Kachar was a very staunch devotee, and Jiva Kachar and both Abel Kachar had six villages. They were the landlords of six villages, meaning they were the owners of six villages each, both of them. And Jiva Kachar was a very staunch devotee. How much so? I can give you a couple examples. One time, it was a monsoon season, and Sriji Maharaj was outside coming in, and he became wet, and he became very, very cold. So Jiva Kachar immediately invited Maharaj to his home. And there, uh, he wanted to light a fire to warm Maharaj's body up. But there was no wood. So how could you light it up? So what he did was he had this bed from, made from cotton. And at that time, it was very expensive. But to warm Maharaj's body up, he teared it apart and threw it inside the fire to make a fire just to warm up Maharaj. This is how much faith he had. Moreover, one time Maharaj became sick and he had, you can say, diarrhea and he had to go to the bathroom right away. So he went inside Jiva Kachar's home and obviously in those days they used to go outside to the bathroom, right? But at that time it was very adverse. So Maharaj Jiva Kachar invited Maharaj inside and inside of his stove he told Maharaj that please go to the bathroom here. This is how much faith a person had in Maharaj himself. These are just a couple examples. But after meeting a person called Buddha Dadal, he became, uh, Buddha Dadal was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. Uh, he was by the Jain religion. And he told Jiva Kachar that Maharaj was a fraud and a pretender. And Maharaj would take away the six villages as he did with Dada Kachar. And he instigated animosity towards Maharaj and Dada Kachar. Just by these words, Jiva Kachar decided to kill Sriji Maharaj himself. How so? Well, he hired assassins, you can say, and sent them and told them to hide in the bathroom because Jiva Kachar knew Sriji Maharaj's route at nighttime, he would go to the bathroom. So Maharaj woke up at that night and uh, he had a bodyguard, Baguji, and other bodyguards. And he told, Maharaj was Antariyami, so he told his bodyguard to go in front, stay in front, and make sure to have his sword out and a lamp out. So while they were going, they reached the bathroom. And just when the bodyguard raised the lantern to see the bathroom, he saw that hired assassin waiting for Maharaj with a sword to cut his head off. But he became afraid of the bodyguard and ran away. Saying this, this was just an example, but such a person at first who decided to warm up Bhagwan Swamiran's body with his own mattress, a person who decided to give Maharaj a stove to go to the bathroom, just by listening to one or two lines of a kusangi, an external kusangi, just by listening to a couple of words, he decided to kill Maharaj. Now, these are just incidents that happen in the time of Sriji Maharaj. But my question was to you, does this happen to you today? Yes, you go to middle school or you go to high school or you go to college, but is there people in your life that take you away from Maharaj, Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and Puja Haribukto? Just ask yourself and you'll get the answer. I'm just giving you a couple of examples here just to help you recognize and just to, you know, put that beware sign up. But if this is happening to you, then shouldn't you look back and kind of turn back towards that person? Just think, just by listening to a couple of words, if one's life can change so much so by deciding to kill Maharaj himself, 
then what can a person from this world at this age not do? Even by saying that, oh, mandir is for lame people, or mandir is for old people, it's not for you. Just these kinds of words can take you or drift you away from coming to mandir and associating with santos. Just by hearing words from others who don't believe in Bhagwan, that is there a God or not, just by listening to this, one can take, that person can take you away from God. So it's very important who you associate with. It's not about, there's a saying in business, in commerce, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. In the same way, in school, if you have 20 or 25 friends, that's not important. But out of those friends, who are worth quality? Who have good things to say about your religion, your santos, your maraj, versus those who have to say bad words about your religion, your santos, your maraj? Just think about that. And you'll get my answer. So saying this, and you're probably wondering, then who should I associate with? Well, to give you the right direction, it's the Akantik Satpurush. There's nothing like the Akantik Satpurush. What do I mean by that? The Akantik Satpurush, or God-realized, self-realized saint, to understand him is probably the deepest spiritual principle in religion itself. If one can understand him, then everything else will be done. Why? Because through him, everything is done. According to Gadara, first chapter, 54th Vajramud, through associating with him, the gates of liberation are opened. According to Vartal, 11th chapter, Vajramud, by keeping affection with him, one can realize one's atma and also have the darshan of Paramatma. According to Gadara last chapter, second Vacharmurth, all of one's purusharts, there's four purusharts, all of one's, you can say, desires can be fulfilled by understanding the Satpurush to be Guru Rubhari. There are so many Vacharmurths. By associating and making him happy, one who is a beggar can become a king according to Gadara 1st chapter 58th Vachamrut. By associating with him, by taking his quality, according to Gadara 1st chapter 58th Vachamrut, one can become like him. So my question is, if all these qualities are inside of the Akantik Satpurush, why not associate with him? Saying this, please think about your choice in your life, who you associate with, and after that, Make a firm decision that this is who I want to share my thoughts with. This is who I want to listen to. This is who I want to speak with. And if you choose wisely, then in the end of your life, you'll see the fruits. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Nani. Darsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda 
धर्मनंदनमहम विचित धर्मनंदनमहम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज ने जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gunsiyam Maharaj, our path me ka tuli prayasun, our Pujya Guruji, Pujya Bhagatji and all of you duties, Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs> Yesterday, as we have a tradition to celebrate each and every festival, every celebration, only in the weekends. So, yesterday, Saturday, we have celebrated uh, Muktanand Swami's 257th birthday now today we are going to discuss about who is muktanand swami what is his divine virtues why he came on this earth this many aspect now first of all who is muktanand swami for us we know Muktanand Swami is a our former guru. Our guru parampara began with Muktanand Swami. Now, Muktanand Swami is one of the great saint of Bhagwan Swami Narayan on his time. Even Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself accept Muktanand Swami as his guru and he always behave in such a manner he give him such respect just as a staunch disciple can give a respect to his guru muktanan swami is not an ordinary soul or ordinary sant but he is came here on earth direct from bhagwan's akshardham the question is that now if muktanand swami is the permanent resident of bhagwan's divine abode akshardham then why he should come here on this earth that is the question for this we should understand one story you just imagine suppose you are alone in a home and you you have a holiday you have no any other activity you have completed your homework and everything you have studied your books and everything now you have lots of time and there is no activity you have no any means of gaming and you are alone in house now you have on the option and that is tv you have turn on tv and you are watching in the tv the channel what you watch uh, what you are watching and uh, in that channel there is the news channel and you are watching a news channel and in that you are watching a scene of 911 attacks two high rise building were collapsed uh due to plane accident that is not an accident but a well planned militant attack now after some time after 2 or 5 minutes video is over and a person meaning a news reporter is coming on a scene he is narrating he is explaining something but you cannot understand because he is speaking in different language he is speaking in french even though you have some knowledge of this language because in your high school days you learn something about french but still you cannot fully grasp what the person is speaking about now you have much interest when you watch the video but as the reporter came in on scene you cannot understand anything and so you again become bored and that's why you change your channel again you have no luck the next channel you are watching that is 
a program of sign language so you have no knowledge of sign language and that's why you cannot understand anything because on screen there is no any other video only a person narrating something with the help of sign with his action you cannot understand his action this is the main point come back to our question why muktan and swami come on this earth even though he was a permanent resident of bhagwan's divine akshardham now we are ordinary human being and just as on tv channel you cannot understand the different language and you cannot understand our human accents what it narrates in the same way in the world approximately 7000 languages are speaking in the different parts of this world how many languages you can understand you can speak merely two or three but not more than that you ask the question yourself if you cannot understand the language of this world the accents of the persons who are of this world then how can you understand the language and accents of those people or those divine being who are totally divine who are not of this earth this is the point if suppose you are in a different part of this world meaning you are in a dense forest of an uh, africa you cannot understand their language in the same way we have a association of bhagwan and his divine santo now bhagwan's word and bhagwan's divine action we cannot understand because they are not of this world and to understand them we have only a single way and that is we have to keep a contact of a person who make us understandable of such language meaning who has the knowledge of those language as well as our language he can only understand he can only give us some trick so that we can understand the divine language divine accents and that's why if bhagwan swami narayan himself come on this earth but if a uh, paramhansa or uh, his great sant like muktanand swami cannot come on this earth then who can make us understand about bhagwan's glory bhagwan's supremacy bhagwan's divine nature divine actions everything that's why muktanand swami come here before 257 years he is come only for the benefit of ours he has no any need to come on this earth from the divine bliss he was enjoying in bhagwan's divine akshardham now another example you and your your friend meaning you along with your friends you are walking on the banks of a river now suddenly while playing you come uh, come into the water and you don't know to swim and you just drawing on the uh, on the water and your friend who know how to swim now you are in the water and as you are not able to swim your friend uh, also dive into into water for saving yourself now suppose the another person a passer by he is watching this scene he is watching you are swimming uh, you are in, in the water as well as your friend is also in the water so he understand both are in the water not more than that but what actual fact is in reality you are not able to swimming on the water 
and your friend is swimming in the water not only that but he is saving your life in the water this is the main point we are as an ordinary jeev we are as an ordinary soul we cannot understand how to live properly in this world and for that when we are on the wrong way when we are not properly living a human life as every reason instruct us to live at the time bhagwan sent his divine personality in the form of his saint to make us to make us to give us some transcendental knowledge so that we can live our life in proper manner that's why a great saint like muktanand swami came on this earth as human being he is living on this earth as we are living he behave as an ordinary human being just as you and your friend both are in the water in the same way muktanand swami's greatness is not even we can imagine but still he behave as an ordinary human being like us so a third party a passer by he can understand muktanand swami and an ordinary person both are the same but not like that both are totally different that is we know now today who is muktanand swami for us we have a true ekantik sant in the form of our puja guru ji and he is in place of muktanand swami because as muktanand swami is not only the name of a person muktanand swami is not a previous sant but muktanand swami is such a position in that in that position he has lots of meaning all the divine virtues in his life even he he can able to guide every person on this world not only this he can able to become he can able to play a role of a guru of even the supreme personality of bhagwan swami narayan this is what the position of muktanand swami this is a status not only a name and we can easily feel we can experience the same qualities the same divine virtues in the life of puja guruji so we should understand guruji's glory as much as we understood or we understand the glory of muktanand swami we should worship him as per what we have our respect and uh, such divine sentiment for muktanand swami we should also apply the same for our puja guru ji now let me today explain and listen one one of the example or one of the incident from the life of muktanand swami you know george washington the first president of usa once upon a time he was passing in a street on his horse now he encounter a black person on the road the black immediately remove his hat and give a salute to his president in the same time george washington also dismount from his horse and he also give respect to that person then his secretary after this incident his secretary asked him that black people is is an ordinary person and you are a president of this nation that person is salute that is okay but i cannot understand why you salute him then the president said even the, an ordinary person can understand the manner in which how to people live now if he understand the manners i am a president of this nation i should also give him respect as he give me in the same way in the life of muktanand swami 
we have an incident once upon a time uh, about 200 bhavas vairagis they came into vartal now they have decided to kill muktanand swami as they understood muktanand swami is a foundation stone of this sampradaya this new fellowship and if we kill muktanand swami then this all sound and movement will be stopped now deciding this the all willing to kill muktanand swami and that's why they came into the temple now muktanand swami on another hand he knew about this arrival of these bhavas muktanand swami also marched towards the bhavas with his saint but the two different situation on the other hand the bhavas had the weapons like sword and another weapons in their hands and and muktanand swami and his group of saint they have a garland of flowers they have a coconut in their hands and they have a plate of uh, some items which use in worship this is what two different situation when the baba made muktanand swami muktanand swami welcome him by saying you are a uh, attendant of dharma dev they could not understand muktanand swami's word but as muktanand swami's divine word divine virtues touch their heart and their anger automatically destroy from their heart and the same time their surrender their weapon into the feet of muktanand swami and they believe muktanand swami is not an ordinary saint but he is a valuer of all even though muktanand swami on highest position we have earlier discussed about it still he gave respect to an ordinary bhava who was an enemy of bhagwan swami as well as his santo and still muktanand swami gave respect to this enemies in this way muktanand swami conquered these bhavas the anger we have lots of incident in the life of muktanand swami because he is a form of divine virtues in the same way today we have muktanand swami in the form of our puja guruji and in the same way guruji has also all the divine virtues what we can see in muktanand swami's life now today as we are explaining some virtues and some incident from the life of muktanand swami we should try to imbibe his virtues in our life his saintliness his politeness his compassionate nature his humility everything now at last by singing a verse in the praise of muktanand swami just as we hari lal ji maharaj ke respect to muktanand swami in his holy book hari lal amrut we should also repeat the same verses namo muktanand prabhu padatana sevak sada महाशास्त्राभ्यासी व्यर्थन गुमावे पड़कदा करे वार्ता ज्यारे सुर सरित धारा समवहे कुसंगी सत्संगी सकल जन चीते अति चहे दिस इज व्हाट आचार्य महाराज हिमसेल्फ praising muktanand swami's virtues in these words bhagwan swami and himself giving our respect to muktanand swami in the vachanamrut by saying whenever you have a disturbing thoughts of lust anger etc and if you want to remove such disturbing thoughts from your mind 
you should pray to Bhagwan as well as you should also pray to a great saint like Muktananda Swami and when you try this command of Bhagwan Swami in your life whenever you feel some disturbing thoughts in your mind then when you remember Muktanand Swami and when you pray to Him, then from the next second you feel your disturbing thoughts will be removed. This is what the power of Muktanand Swami. So, we are not only saying happy birthday to Muktanand Swami, but we should try to imbibe His virtues and we should learn His lives incident from various books and his divine virtues from his life incident so that we can at least imbibe a single virtue from his life then that will much more enough for us to live a whole life in peace and happiness in the satsang by saying this jai swami Narayan. श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वदेवेश्वरम भक्तिधर मात्मजम वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामदम कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनीज